Good morning, it's Jeffrey Christian. It's actually being recorded at uh, 8.10 on the morning of the 16th of October. Friday the 18th, it's gonna be kind of a busy schedule for us, so I'm pre-recording this. Also, it's not ne uh, necessarily short, ultra short-term time sensitive. I wanna to talk today about copper. We don't normally discuss it uh, in these videos, but it is one of the metals that we followed since the 1970s. And the title I've given it is Copper's Bright Futures, plural. And I say that because I think that the future of copper prices and copper use in general is bright for the next couple years, but it's also bright on a longer term basis. And I'll talk about both of them over the course of this video. Here's a chart of copper prices since January of 2023. And see that during 2023, there was a lot of expectations that the world would move into a recession imminently. CPM group did not uh, agree with that consensus, but that was the consensus in the market. And in that environment, a lot of investors were not particularly interested in copper. A lot of manufacturers were actually discording the inventories, lightening up their inventories in the expectation that they wouldn't need as much copper in 2023, 2024 as they had anticipated. Uh, and, and the supply was just plugging along. Actually, we had a pretty good year in terms of mine production growth in copper in 2023. As we got into 2024, that market expectation or opinion of economic activity shifted away from an imminent recession to a soft landing to, hey, the economies in the United States, Canada, parts of Europe, not all of Europe, uh, and other parts of the world are much stronger than we had anticipated. And inv investors started taking long positions in copper, primarily in the London Metal Exchange copper contract, um, and manufacturers start rebuilding their inventories, both for current consumption and in the anticipation of a stronger economic uh, period and stronger demand for copper products over the next uh, several quarters, if not years. And in that environment, the copper price, these are LME prices, the copper price, which you know started the year around $8,600 per metric ton, rose sharply to around $11,000 per metric ton, uh, close to a record price perhaps, but not quite as high as it was uh, 15 years ago. Came down, but it stayed above that earlier range that we saw in the second half of 2023 and now it's starting to rise again. All of the charts that I'm showing you today on copper are from our base metals advisory, and uh, the, le the most recent issue was at the end of September uh, 2024. Uh, we've updated the prices here through the uh, 16th of October this morning. Um, so we've seen copper prices starting to rise, and that's interesting because the market has actually been well supplied over the last month or so as the copper price has been rising. There's a potential that the price could come off over the next couple of months, to be honest, and we could see the price go down below $9,000 per metric ton again, as it was in August and the beginning of September. So we're not necessarily expecting prices to rise imminently, but we are expecting stronger prices in 2025 and 2026, much higher prices, probably exceeding $11,000 per metric ton. So longer term, the next couple of years, we're looking for higher prices. And then on an even longer term, we are expecting even stronger prices. There are two sets of opinions behind recent prices and our price expectation. And I say two sets of opinions as opposed to two sets of realities because it's really the market opinions that drive short-term prices. 
The first one, which I just discussed, was the idea that current economic activity had, and thus copper demand, has been much stronger than had been expected. So you had stronger demand from fabricators, you had stronger in investment interest in copper, which primarily goes through futures because it's kind of hard to store copper physically. And we hadn't seen a recession. The other opinion was this longer term expectation that the energy transition is going to demand tremendous amounts of copper and that there is a lack of new mine supplies available to meet that demand. Both of those are true. Both of them probably are overhyped right now in the market. Uh, our expectation is the energy transition and the electrification of things and the world around the world will continue and will require more copper. We do think that there is potential new supplies of copper to be mined. It's just that the mining industry uh, hasn't necessarily activated that and moved in that direction. There are a lot of headwinds, including uh, government regulations, resource nationalism, a lack of capital uh, for exploration expenditures, probably mis-exploration, uh, a lot of desktop exploration work as opposed to field research looking for new deposits. Uh, so we do think that the longer term outlook for copper demand and prices is, is good and strong and probably will lead to higher prices, but perhaps not as fast and as far as some people say it would be true. Now, in this environment, there have been pockets of strength and pockets of weakness, and that's not unusual. Let's look at Chinese demand. And here are two industry sectors that use a lot of copper. On the right-hand side, on the left-hand side, is the copper, the Chinese power grid investments. And you can see that it was very strong in the period 2013, 2016. And then the amount of money that the Chinese government and utilities were putting into grid expansion was very low from 2017, really through 2023. This year, there has been a 23, 24% increase in the amount of money going into grid expansion. That's good for steel, aluminum, and copper. So pockets of strength, and then on the right-hand side, pockets of plateauing demand. Now this chart's a little bit misleading because the bar for 2024 is only through uh, August. So you see 150 million un uh, air conditioning units being built in the first eight months. You know, and if you annualize that, you get like 225. So you're looking at a relatively strong um, level of output for air conditioning units. They use a lot of copper in, in them. Uh, but you've seen this plateauing in the number of air conditioning units over the last five years, six years, and that more or less is continuing. We're starting to come out of that. Um, and obviously air conditioning units um, have a strong correlation with construction and real estate and housing. And the housing industry in China has been particularly constrained. So you wouldn't be surprised or you shouldn't be surprised that the air conditioning industry has sort of plateaued over the last several years. Now, on top of all of that, <clears throat> the Chinese government recently has announced at least two stimulus programs uh, to try to re-energize the Chinese economy. And our expectation is that they will succeed. Uh, they're a managed economy, and uh, the government has the resources to pour a lot of money back into the economy. So that probably will boost Chinese demand over the next couple of years. And if you go back to 2008-2009, during the Great Recession, you know, the United States came up with a multi-trillion dollar 
investment programs to stimulate the economy and spend probably about 10% of that over five years. The Chinese government came out with a similar stimulus program and was buying aluminum and steel and copper for, for the railroads and for highway construction that day. So, you know, being a communist country with a managed economy has its advantages when it comes time to put money into the economy and get it out of a period of slow growth. So we expect the recently announced government programs to lead to stronger demand for raw materials, including copper, over the next couple of years. And that dovetails into our supply demand outlook and our price expectations. This is a chart that we use in our base metals advisory monthly. We have these for all six of the major LME traded uh, metals. The blue bars are the balance between supply and fabrication demand, uh, and the red and blue lines are relative, or respectively uh, supply and demand. You can see a very tight uh, market. We have been running in deficits for several years from around 2018 into 2021. 2023 saw a small surplus. We have a much larger surplus this year, which is interesting because A, it probably kept the price down somewhat, and B, it may contribute to what I mentioned at the very beginning, which is the possibility that you could see copper prices back off in the next couple of months uh, before rising much more strongly in 2025. If you look at this, you know, the, the big bar uh, is 2024 surplus, 2025, 2026, we're projecting deficits, and in 20, by 2026, pretty large deficit. So that's the basis for our, law, our expectations of higher prices. We are seeing slower growth in demand, but we're also seeing even slower growth in supply. And that's where those surplus, the surpluses turn into deficits. Um, the big risk to this ex, these projections is a recession. And that is a possibility. It still is a probability in our main scenario. Uh, but the question is, how severe will it be and how fast will various governments and industries respond to it? So our expectation right now is this, but there is that recession risk to pay attention to. Briefly looking at gold and silver, the gold price is testing 2,700 as we speak. Um, and our expectation is that political concerns as well as economic concerns will probably push the price over 2,700. Uh, in the last two and a half months of this year into 2025. And silver prices have gone above $32, uh, which I believe is what we were talking about in our video on Tuesday. Uh, they have broken above $32, and they're looking to see if they can move higher. That's all I have for now. You can go to our website. You can... Um, by our yearbooks, you can subscribe to the Base Metals Advisory or the Monthly Precious Metals Advisory. There are other reports that you can read about. There are a lot of free reads and videos. And you can send us an email at info at cpmgroup.com if you want to talk about how we can help you manage your exposure to precious metals, base metals, and other commodities in general as an investor, as a producer, as a processor, as an industrial user of these metals. We work for all of those groups. Most of our work seems to be with in investors. That's all I have. Take care of yourself. Take care of others. Have a good weekend. We'll talk to you next week.